going on guys? Dan Watson, LearningCameras.com, and here we are, and we've got Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC, depending on which one you have. Uh, this is Lightroom CC that I'm using right now, but it's basically got a ton of new features. Not too bad of an upgrade at all. You have to keep in mind that Lightroom is introducing some new features as we go along in the year, so you know, there's not as many in these big bulk releases as we saw in the past, but it's not a bad release. So um, let's take a look at some of the new features that are out there, some of my favorites. And uh, you know, as we take a look, I'm going to go ahead and show you just a quick one here. And that is when we go to the import now, we have an add to collection button right up at the top right. And that enables you, so if you're importing some pictures, you can actually add it straight into the collection that you have, which is a really nice feature. Um, also, some of the other essentials that we'll go over is in the performance tag now, you in the preferences, you can actually use a graphics processor instead of it just being the, the standard processor. So you're actually going to be offloading some of that into the graphics card, which will help your performance, hopefully. And so we are able to do that. And now here are some big ones. So this is stuff that we used to have to go to Photoshop for, and now I don't have to. So here I have a hotel room I took a picture of and now if I um, control click on that or right click if you're using a PC I can hit photo merge and do a panoramic without having to go to Photoshop now the nice thing about this is I actually have done no editing on any of these files so these are straight from there and I don't have to worry about it because I'm able to do my editing after the fact because I'm still dealing with my raw DNG DNG file so Everything is still going to be preserved. I can change my white balance. I can change all of my settings in there. So you can go through your uh, projections. Obviously, for this one, we're going to do a perspective. And we can have it auto crop the area in, which I'm going to do. And we'll go ahead and hit Merge. And what Lightroom is going to do is what we used to have to jump into Photoshop for, except we no longer have to save it as a TIFF file or anything like that and lose some quality in the process. And if we want to make changes, so let's say I deliver this image to my client and they say, you know what, this hotel room, I don't like the look, I want to change this up. I don't have to go through and re-merge these photos. I can start my editing on the merged file. So here I've got my merged file and I can go straight into my editing of this. And that is going to enable me, yep, to do all of my processing that I would normally do. So if I need to change my tones, we'll go ahead and increase the shadows and my highlights. Uh, we can set my white points and then set my black and we'll add a little clarity to this. Okay, so this gives me kind of a base image to start with on where I'm gonna go. And you can see I'm still dealing with my full raw file. So I have complete control over the temperature of this and I can actually customize even uh, to the T my exact temperature and I'm dealing with the already edited raw file, which is awesome. And now the other feature, which is another one that I used to have to go to Photoshop for, and we're going to do the same process here. So control click, and that's going to get me into the photo merge. And here we have HDR and also a really cool feature because now I don't have to use a secondary software. If you didn't have Photoshop before, this is huge to be able to do this now within Lightroom. If you did have Photoshop or Photomatrix or some of the other ones, this just gives you another option. And once again, the nice thing with this is even after I merge that file, I'm still dealing with raw DNG files. So I'm not having to worry about, okay, this is a TIFF file or huge TIFF file. Uh, I used to get past that by doing a 32-bit TIFF file, which kind of gave me the room and latitude that I would get in a raw image. Uh, but if you had to go to JPEG or something like that, you were losing that. So here I have all my options here. I can auto align them, auto tone, which is interesting. It's kind of like editing the raw file for you and toning things up. So I'm actually going to leave that off for now and then go ahead and do that merge. And we can take a look and see as it's creating that HDR. And it's um, not too slow, not too quick, but it gives us the file. All right, and so here I have my finished file. It's hard to tell which one it is. Okay, here it is. It's called hdr.dng. So you can see that I'm still dealing with a DNG file. And that's gonna mean I still have quite a bit of room 
to be able to do my editing and still have my control over things like white balance and everything like that. So if my client once again comes to me afterwards and says, hey, I want to make these changes with the file after the fact, I can do that no problem at all. So, and you know, if we look at the HDR file, it seems to be pretty good. We um, don't have a lot of the noise issues that we would have if I was to have shot this. And once again, we can go back and look at the original images. You can see that this is my file to start with and this is my other file and you just have areas that you're going to be losing especially in those highlights so even if I take this actually so let's um, let's see the differences here we're going to sync these settings and we're going to sync everything exactly and then we can take a look at the two files side by side and you can see I have a little bit more room in the skies and my highlights with my raw file and I also have a lot more room in the shadows and yeah, then the noise is just not as bad as if I'm dealing with the NEF. I'm not sure what you're going to be able to see on YouTube here, but uh, when I get into the file, I'm seeing a little bit more noise in this than I am with the HDR one, which looks very, very clean. So awesome feature. We're still able to make our changes after the fact. One of the biggest ones here, it's going to keep me from using Photoshop a lot more for this type of stuff. Now another feature gets into when we uh, start to do our, our brushes and some of our options. So I'll go ahead and go into the develop module here. And this is my wife and when she was pregnant with our, I believe it was a third child. And when I go ahead and do some of the settings that I would usually do to edit a file and I've already done it to this one but let's say I wanted to kind of dim that background a little bit more. Now we do have the option of adding a brush and what you can do is you can feather away certain areas so that we're not making those changes. And so this lets me kind of edit it a little bit and get it so where the effect is really only affecting the area. I'm going to go ahead and make this darker. And what we can do is we can auto mask. And so what I can do is go through here and make sure that the effect is going on just the background and not really her at all. And so it allows me to kind of fine tune these areas, which used to be much harder to do. All right, so now that I have actually, you know, a pretty good mask on here, now I can make any changes that I want and I'm not going to be affecting whatever subject I put in there. And you're going to have these same things available, uh, not just with the, with the radio filter, but also if we go ahead and I take a gradient filter and you're going to see that when I do my gradient filter, if I change my exposure there, I still have my brush options on that. So uh, that is another of the awesome features that are in here. Also, if we take a look at our slideshow module, things have a few more options than we used to have before. We have the option of inserting multiple songs. We can have the slideshows automatically playing to the music. We are panning and zooming now into our slideshows and we have quality options, which are nice to see as well. So definitely a lot of improvements. These are the main ones. There are a ton of little stuff too, but these are the ones that I've been playing around with so far that would make me say, oh man, this is probably worth the update. And if you're ever doing HDRs or panoramics, that is a huge reason right there to upgrade to Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC will both have these features. So you can check out, I'll put a link to B&H into the description. You'll also be able to see it on the website, learningcameras.com. And if you want to use those for your purchase of Lightroom 6, you can. They have a good deal right now, 99 bucks. I'm not sure what it'll be when you take a look at it, but it's going to go up to, I think it's $10 a month for the Adobe package, which includes Lightroom and Photoshop. Or right now you can do it for 100 bucks for the whole year. So take advantage of that and check it out. And we got some new stuff coming up. So uh, stay tuned for that and we'll see you in a little bit.